Hey y'all, here are OS Reviews. Today we're taking a quick look at the Unihertz Atom L. This is a compact, rugged Android smartphone, which is waterproof, shockproof, and it's made by a company that has also given us other niche, unique phones, such as the Jelly series, which was the world's smallest Android smartphones, having this ultra-small 3-inch display, along with the TikTok series, which has a secondary rear display on the back for acting as a viewfinder for the camera, also showing notifications, not to mention some of their keyboard smartphones, the Titan series, which is kind of a spiritual successor to Blackberries. So in contrast, the Atom L perhaps isn't quite as distinctive, but still is compact in a day and age where phones are reaching six to seven inches. So we'll take a closer look at first the packaging contents. You get a SIM card ejector tool along with a additional screen protector. One is already pre-applied out of the box. Other packaging contents include a USB charger, pretty standard stuff, along with a USB Type-C charging cable. Like most of Unihertz offerings, this is an unlocked. It's a dual SIM phone that supports two 4G LTE SIMs. It's rocking the Helio P60 processor, which is octa-core at two gigahertz. It's a pretty decent mid-tier chipset. It's complemented with six gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of built-in storage, and a pretty large 4,300 milliamp hour capacity battery for a four inch phone. And final specs include a 48 megapixel rear facing camera, eight megapixel front facing selfie lens, like most rugged phones, it's fully specced in terms of connectivity and also has built-in NFC for contactless mobile payment, as well as GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, the essentials we've come to expect, although the Atom L does not support Qi wireless charging. Overall though, I think these are fair specs, considering that this device often goes on sale for around 250 bucks, which is really not bad for the horsepower and the rugged design that we're looking at here. So taking a closer look here at the build, it is extremely solid, as expected for a rugged phone. We have these aluminum rails and then a very thick, durable rubber coating there on the back, which will resist fingerprints as well as drop and shock, thanks to these added bumpers. There's a lanyard strap, a single loudspeaker, and then we have just a single rear-facing camera on this unit with a dual-tone LED flash. On the bottom, just a Type-C port for charging and data, along with a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, even though this is a fully waterproof IP68 smartphone, which is impressive to see. And on the side here, we have access to just a power key, a volume rocker, all the buttons are pretty tactile, made out of metal, and the very top here also retains an IR blaster, getting increasingly rare, but you can use this to control TVs, other appliances like AC units, Units. And then on the other side, there is the dual SIM card slash micro SD expansion slot, as well as a programmable hotkey that you can use to trigger other commands. For example, long holding for a few seconds by default will turn on the flashlight, but you can change this to other shortcuts that you desire in the settings. And the very bottom here features a fingerprint scanner, which is relatively responsive and easy to use. It's always on, so putting your finger there can always unlock the device. It also acts as a home button, so whenever you tap on it, it will take you back into the main menu that you see here. Along the sides, we also have two shortcut keys. So this one on the right will bring up the multitasking drawer, which you can use to close out of other applications, whereas the one on the left will take you back by one page. It's getting increasingly rare to find these soft keys, as newer Android phones have adopted to use gesture navigation with more full screen experiences, uh, getting rid of a lot of these traditional buttons, but it's still nice to have this as an option if you need it, considering this is a smaller phone. So although it's not the sleekest design in the world, it feels very robust with all these rubber and metal accents, definitely usable with just one hand, and it's more practical as well compared to the uh, Jelly series, which at three inches is really too small for many folks to use as a daily driver. This I think fits the bill as something in between. Taking a closer look at the UI experience next, we are talking about Android 11, uh, which is relatively clean and Unihertz have not really added any launchers or bloatware on top of the UI. So you you just have the standard Google tools along with access to the Play Store and just a small handful of additional utility tools which are also helpful including a voice recorder, you'll also find an FM radio if you use the headphone jack as the antenna, there is an SOS mode which you can program several contacts in advance and whenever you trigger the key it will send your location to your contact. You'll also find a built-in app here for using the infrared remote 
in which you can control anything using infrared via that sensor at the top. Aside from that, there's just the toolbox, which gives you a handful of other extra utilities, such as a compass that takes advantage of the sensor. You can measure your heart rate by putting your finger over the camera, and then it will estimate that just by using the flash. A simple pedometer app for measuring steps that you've taken, as well as using the barometer to measure the air pressure around you. You can even measure your speed using the speedometer app, so if you're driving, you'll know how fast you're moving around. There's an underwater camera mode, which will deactivate the touchscreen. Press on the red key there to snap an image, since the touchscreen will be less sensitive once it's exposed to water. So you can capture some footage of fish, for example. If you're going outside, tap on the power key once to exit. Other tools include a USB camera mode, so you can even use this phone as a webcam. Using Windows or Mac, it will be recognized, and then you can use this to have conferences a higher resolution lens than the one or two megapixel camera we often find on our laptops. Taking a closer look at the camera performance next, as aforementioned, it's a single 48 megapixel sensor, uh, which is actually quite adequate, despite not being the most versatile setup, since it doesn't have, again, wide angle, telephoto, or any of those other fancy tricks. Though you are able to adjust some of the properties manually, including ISO and exposure levels, and under advanced settings, you can toggle between the resolution, and under video, you can record footage up to full HD 1080p resolution, but there is no 4K capture on this particular unit. So pretty basic, but the interface at least is easy to use. You do have to remain relatively still when capturing your shots, especially when the light starts going down. But because of the 48 megapixel resolution, you can still get plenty of details as you are zooming in and cropping into your shots, which is good. And under daytime environments, shots still look generally pleasing, but doesn't have, of course, as much computational photography as a Pixel or an iPhone. Although again, this is going to be a less expensive device at the end of the day, so that's more or less expected. Otherwise, in terms of general system navigation, it feels relatively swift and responsive, again thanks to the Helio P60, which is no slouch. Benchmarks put it relatively close to something like a Snapdragon 660, uh, which is decent enough in terms of day-to-day -day usage. This thing is a endurance champion, getting you over two to three days of usage on average before you have to really recharge it again. In terms of storage, it has roughly 117 gigs left after the operating system is installed, which I think is also sufficient for a phone of its class. Some additional software tricks include the ability to customize the LED notification light. So for incoming calls, for instance, you can program it to flash blue, green, red, or none. So there is a little bit of customization. You can even display the charging voltage and current as the device is being topped up. So some of these extras, including gestures for flipping the phone over to mute an incoming call, being able to control whether each app can use mobile or Wi-Fi in terms of data, as well as more importantly, toggling into to the quick launch shortcut key. So what a single press versus a long press will trigger as well as a double press. So in this case, it's gonna be a screenshot. All of these commands can be reprogrammed as you can see there to open up other shortcuts and applications. And you will also get some occasional firmware updates and security patches from Unihertz. Although when it comes to OS level updates, it's gonna be a little bit more scarce on phones like this. So I wouldn't be too enthusiastic about it getting Android 12 or 13 for instance. So let's take a quick look at the web browsing performance next. I'm going to try and jump into something like The Verge. And one thing that you can tell here is on a smaller phone in general, it definitely takes a little bit more of a retraining on your fingers uh, for you to type as quickly as you do on larger phones. However, if you've been someone that's hanging on to smaller devices, if you're using an older generation iPhone, maybe an SE that has a 4.7 inch screen, this thing is not going to be too far off. And you can also use the accelerometer to rotate the screen and get you a slightly larger experience this way. Again, the Helio P60 is doing a very good job when it comes to loading back web pages as expected, but oftentimes you do have to zoom and crop around a little bit more because of the smaller screen. But overall, there's no issues here when it comes to being able to read back articles and even do some multitasking with the six gigs of RAM that we have on board. Now, speaking of reception quality also is very strong, which is important for a rugged phone. I am getting almost full bars, even though the router is actually on a different level of this 
building at the moment, which is good. And the same thing goes with 4G LTE. When tested with T-Mobile, I was able to achieve almost full bars of reception as well. Phone calls were very clear over the microphone, along with a bit of noise reduction as well. So let's jump into YouTube and do a quick demo of what it's like watching a video and hear what the speakers sound like next. Alright, so some takeaways here being that the speaker does get very loud, but it can sound a little bit piercing at the highest volume level. I would say a loudspeaker is also important on a rugged phone in case you need to use it as an alarm or some type of siren. Although the single placement on the back is a little bit unfortunate. It would have been better, I think, if it was located on the edge or maybe on the front would have been harder to cover up. Still, I think it suffices. And in terms of the video playback experience, a couple of notes here being that the P60, again, is doing quite well in terms of loading back videos, interactions with the UI feel pretty fast and responsive as you can see there. With that being said, a smaller screen definitely isn't going to be the best choice if you're trying to consume longer form content. Still, colors for the most part are relatively natural looking with wide viewing angles. As an IPS LCD screen, I think it's relatively satisfactory. Uh, brightness level also seems to be doing all right with pretty pleasant and natural looking colors and gets you a decent experience if you're watching something quick on YouTube. And when it comes to doing a little bit of gaming, it's no surprise that it can handle it all right when it comes to entry level, mid-tier games, which are not super demanding, still run very smooth, and the phone doesn't get hot either in terms of runtime, so there's no real thermal throttling issues even as you're gaming for longer sessions, which is good, but of course it's not the ideal form factor for uh, triple A style games, since smaller text details will require more squinting for you to interact with. And again, it doesn't have the most powerful GPU in the world, but for lighter titles like this, and there's absolutely no uh, content that you can't install from the Play Store, whether it's productivity tools or other third-party apps. So that's more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of the Unihertz Atom L. Overall, uh, again, the Atom series, it's representing the rugged devices from this brand, and it's going to suit folks looking for more of an endurance champion, as well as a device that's built very well with the Corning Gorilla Glass, as well as the IP and shock absorbency rating. It feels super solid, nice customizable shortcut key. With that being said, of course, don't expect it to get you the fastest frame rates if you are a gamer and not necessarily getting you the best camera in the world when it comes to the computational photography. But as long as you're keeping your expectations modest, I think it still is a pretty nice uh, rugged Android smartphone, especially since a lot of rugged devices are also getting larger and larger in terms of size and footprint. Uh, this is going to be one of the few pocket-sized portable units that you can consider, but doesn't really compromise too much on performance at the end of the day. You can check out additional details if you're interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Unihertz Atom L.